Hello and welcome to Check It Out with Rich. Uh, we have had this camper now for two and a half years back, about that. And um, one of the first things I wanted to get was a backup camera. So I did a little bit of research. Uh, Furion was, seemed expensive for what they gave you. So I went with a Halo View. Well, back in April, this is now June, I'm finally getting around to this. Uh, sorry, Halo View. But uh, they asked me if I wanted to try their BT-11 Bite Tango System Rear Observation Camera. Okay, just by going on the box, it has a blind spot detection alert. Uh, the camera is HD 1080p. It's a wireless camera. Intelligent full color. It's a touch screen, which is nice. The one I have now isn't a touch screen. And uh, it has anti-glare. I guess that means on the... Uh, um, monitor itself it has anti-glare and it's easy to install which we will find out and it also which I like it also has a, da a dash camera so now you can have a forward-facing camera in case something happens so let's uh, get inside the box and see what all is in here okay Let's see here. Well, it looks like it's uh, well protected in its, in its packaging. And we have some directions, which we will, we will definitely need. And we have some uh, cleaning wipes for adhesives, I guess. And then here is your monitor that straps onto your rear rear view mirror and as you can see it does have a forward facing camera and it also slides out which is nice in case you have a larger mirror okay and then you have uh antenna wire in case your rig is too long uh i'm gonna i'm gonna try it without it i'm gonna mount the cable on the roof but i'm gonna try it without this and then if i do need it all i have to do is hook it up be easy hook up and we have one big antenna and this plugs into the cigarette lighter and i guess everything else will plug into it i guess your uh, monitor goes here two antennas and what's nice about this you're plugging into your cigarette lighter but you do have some usb ports one is actually a 3.0 too the other one's a 2.4 amp Okay, moving on, you have the camera. What we have here, we have some uh, wire management clips. Okay, this looks like the back of the camera and a rubber gasket. And we have three more antennas, some screws. Some wire connectors. And a bunch of wiring. And let's see what these are. Okay, this is a power filter. And a power conversion box. We'll find out what that's for. Uh, 12, okay, it's a transformer. Uh, 12 volts in, 5 volts out. And this is a uh, GPS. Um, from what I understand, they use this to track your speed in that. And then your blind spot detection, I guess when cars are coming up on you, um, this will help them determine how fast you're going, how fast they're, they're going. And from what I heard, the system works pretty good. Okay, that's it. Let's get uh, what we need in the truck in here. We'll leave the camera and the antenna in the camper until we're ready to install it. Okay, before we go out to the truck to uh, install the monitor and all the wiring, uh, Halo View set, set me some talking points I, I wanna go over right now and then uh, we'll probably touch base on them more later once we're actually doing the uh, test, which will probably ha happen next weekend. We're leaving to go to New York.
One of the things I've noticed, I, I have watched a couple other videos and they emphasize that it's more than just a backup camera, it's an observation camera. And I've noticed that since I bought mine, I use it more as an observation camera. We use it more driving down the road than we actually do when we back up. Sometimes I don't even look at the monitor when I'm backing up. Um, I rely on Becky screaming at me. But anyway, um, it is a 1080p rear view mirror dash cam and backup system with blind spot monitoring. It's high definition rear view camera and tenant streaming media IPS high brightness screen with anti-reflection technology. I, I'm really curious about that. Um, especially at night or something, you get light shining from the side onto the monitor if it's going to distort it at all. It also uses uh, AI algorithms to detect the uh, vehicles coming up on you with a faster response time, which is supposed to be like one second, which is, uh, I think it's pretty good. That's very important. You have somebody flying 90 miles an hour behind you, you're doing 60. Uh, they can come up on you pretty quick. So one second response time is pretty good. And then the uh, blind spot detection system. It features an audio, audible and visual alarms on the, let's see if I get this right. On the left side, it has a bong bong. And then on the right side, it has a ting ting. And it will also have a red indicator that comes up on either screen. It has enhanced visibility in rainy and low light conditions and reduces driving risk in inclement weather. It eliminates raindrop interference and it enhances image contrast. And it also uh, has uh, automatic brightening on low light or rainy days, which is very important. I'm very curious. I may, once I get this hooked up, come out tonight when it's dark and just see how well uh, I can see in the monitor. It's equipped with a GPS uh, system that detects your uh, speed. And it also has a G sensor preventive loss of important footage, which basically if you're in an accident or I believe if you decelerate very quickly, it will save that footage. So I don't know if it puts it in a file itself or it just um, tags it or whatever. Okay, so let's uh, get out and get this thing hooked up. It's hot out there, so we're gonna try to do it as fast as we can. Okay, I'm going to uh, hook the wires up first before I put it up there just be a little, a little easier I hope I don't know I might be wrong okay so we want the GPS like that the GPS and it's even labeled I don't know if you can see that or not but it's labeled on the top here what's what so the GPS is going to go in but I forgot to mention that it does come with a 64 um, SD card, which I'll have to check the uh, instructions to see if you can jack up to a 128 or larger. Okay, the next where to put it is this one. So there's only uh, three ports up here for wires. So you really can't mess them up. Okay, so that is it. Let me get this unraveled. And there's no way of, uh, from what I see here, there's no way of mixing the wires up. One thing I think I would do is I might put some tape around this just so it doesn't come undone. All right, so let's get this up here. And there's nice little, uh, like, bungees back here. That hold it on and there's multiple um, there's a couple holes on each side so depending on the size of your mirror you should be okay all right let's try to do this here oh, dropped one okay we're gonna have to move the camera out boy once that baby locks in there it's in there pretty good that's centered pretty good. Get this one. Okay, and that's it. 
weird that all the cords are coming off the top. You would think they would come off the bottom. No, not really. What makes you say that? Uh, it just seems weird that they're on the top. The reason they're on the top is because you don't want the wires coming straight down. You can do that if you want. You know, you can have the wires hanging down, but you're supposed uh, to rod them around. Gotcha. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get these wires routed. There's no sense you sitting here watching me do this. Every vehicle's different, so you'll just have to figure out yourself. Usually you can pull that down and shove the wire up. You might be able to take this panel off. So we'll just see how it goes. All right, we got the wires ran. It didn't take very long. We just ran them down and through here, and then there's a seal on the side of your door that we just tucked the wire into, and then the GPS just stays on a dash. And then your power wire, wire, make sure those are in. I have coming down here, along the door, then up underneath the dash. I actually have it coming out underneath the steering column because I have a, uh, I have a uh, cigarette lighter port here. So now we want to get the antennas. This thing comes with four antennas. Um, I think, okay, the real, the real long one goes on your um, extension for your camera. And then you have another one here that will go on your camera if you don't need the uh, extension. And then you have two here that go on your, po on your power supply. So let's get them on and then they can move 90 degrees. I'm, yeah, 90 degrees. Get the other one on and that's it. And then now we want to plug our power in And this only goes in one way. There's a little notch there that it has to feed into. And then we're going to put that in there. Move that down. And I really do like that they, they include um, USB ports. And the top one being a 3PO is real good. Because with, uh, with your big phones, you need a lot of juice going into it. All right. So let's come up here and take the uh, plastic off. And don't forget the camera. All right, that's all off. And the forward-facing camera is working. Oh, look, it, it found where we are and changed the time and the date. Huh. 6.15. It's 12.44. Is it? The only problem is we're not facing north. It's not 12.44. <laughs> what time is it? 1.44. Okay, it hasn't found us yet. <laughs> Okay, it's now time to get the uh, camera hooked up. Uh, Becky's hanging on to the ladder on the camper for dear life. She doesn't like heights, so we're going to try to get this done as soon as we can. Um, I did not want to put any more holes in the camper, so I went up to Lowe's and spent 20 bucks on a uh, PVC trim board. Uh, that's all I used of it. It was eight foot long, and I just drilled in. I drilled holes in here into the existing holes that I had on my previous Halo View camera. So now I can mount this onto here and I, I'm not putting any more holes in. Okay, um, I'm gonna use, hold on, she's falling, she's falling. <laughs> okay, luckily the existing uh, power supply, the wire um, from the old Halo View is the same as the new one. So I'm just gonna use this, but they do supply you with one that has lead ends. Now, Alliance has wires in here that's hooked up to a switch inside the camper that we can turn off and on when needed. Uh, a lot of people will hook up to their tail lights and then you'll have to have your running lights on when you're uh, running the camera. And they also provide, I think this is hook to hook up to Furion. Uh, some manufacturers have Furion uh, wiring in here so I guess that just plugs into it and this then plugs into your uh, lead from your camera. Alright so what we have here is that's your camera that's the back of it of course and this plate goes on you have a couple ways you can do this you can take one of these notches out 
and run your wire straight down like I am, or you can run your wire through the hole and mount it directly. If I was mounting it here, that's what I would do. I would just run the wire through here, and then, but we're gonna come out through the bottom and put that on. And they also give you a rubber gasket to go on here. I need to adjust. Becky needs to adjust. We'll be back momentarily. Ooh, that might work. That might work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to center this up left to right and then keep it flush with the bottom. And I'm just going to pre-drill some holes in here. I'm going to get one and then I can get the screw in to get the, the other ones in. So we want to put our back on, make sure your wire is in the groove, put the back on, and then your rubber gasket. And then try to get your screw here. Make sure everything's together. I should have brought my screw gun. Okay, that's nice and tight. Now we're just gonna make, make sure it's level. Let me uh, adjust this a little bit more here. Okay, yeah, you have to make sure it's level and then we'll get the other screw in here. Okay, we got it all screwed on. It's pretty sturdy. I used, um, I siliconed the back of this PVC to also help it along with the uh, four screws. So we'll put the antenna on and then we will hook up the power and then i'm gonna get a cable tie and uh wire these up so they're not dangling down is something like that and then this camera is adjustable for your pitch up and down so we're going to leave it right there uh, we might adjust it as we're driving uh, underneath here is a little button that's your pairing button this was already paired but if you had to pair them, you would, we'll show you later. You push a button in the truck, and then you push this within 50 seconds, and it'll pair. Okay, so that's the camera, the camera mount. Um, we're leaving Thursday or Friday? Friday. We're leaving Friday, and we'll do a little bit of a setup and a review on it as we're driving. Okay. Okay, Halo View also sent me an uh, um, antenna cable extension. This is it here. And uh, that's your big ass antenna that goes with it. But uh, I tested this out before I hooked the camera up back here. And I was pretty far away from the rig before I lost signal. I'm talking um, uh, probably about 500 yards away. So we're going to try it without this. And then on our trip, if we need it, we'll, we have a four hour ride ahead of us. We're going to take our time. If we need it, I'll, I'm going to pull over when we're ready to take a break and put this on real quick and uh, see if it works any better. Okay, we're on 79 North on our way to New York. We're going to Letch... Letchworth. Letchworth State Park. It's supposed to be pretty nice, some nice waterfalls. Uh, we'll be there for five days. But uh, we've had the uh, camera going. You might have just heard it ding, and I got a car coming up on me. I, I kind of like that. Uh, you're BSing or daydreaming or whatever, and it goes off and lets you know when a car is coming up. We haven't had to calibrate it. It seems to be working all right, but as soon as we get a straightaway here, I'm going to have my lovely assistant calibrate it just so we can uh, see how it works. Um, it has a G sense. What was it? G sensor? Yeah. It has a G sensor that if you have an impact, it will record that. And we went over the one bridge and a pretty good bump, and it come on, it said SOS up on the screen, and it recorded for like 30 seconds or something like that. But I'm gonna wait here for a car to come up, and 
I don't know how well you'll see the screen, but uh, we'll get a little video of the car coming up and the alert. Now, when, when a car comes up on the right side, it makes more of a ting-ting noise. Uh, it's only went off once. And actually, is when we was going around the bend, it actually picked up the car behind behind us. So it might might need um, calibrated for that, but uh, it's been working pretty good. But as soon as we get a straightaway, we'll um, go ahead and calibrate it, and you, you can see how it's done. Okay, we got a bit of a straightaway, so we're going to try to calibrate this, and Becky's going to take you through the steps. Okay, first thing she has to do is bring the menu up, swipe from the bottom. And then go over and hit the BSD button. And then that'll take you into the uh, programming. Now she's going to try to calibrate it for automatic calibration. And did it let you? Nope. Went straight to manual. Okay. Now we have to go to manual. So first thing she wants to do is touch the bottom left line. And I have to stay in the middle of the road. Okay. And then next the top left line. Which I can't see. Yeah, this is very hard uh, driving. I would suggest if you have the opportunity to find a road somewhere to uh, do it while you're parked. Alright, but the thing is, it's been, it was working perfectly fine straight out of the box, so I would try it without calibrating it. If you're having an issue, go ahead and calibrate it. Okay, let's go over the uh, Spark Box at a re rear view, and uh, we'll go over all the buttons and all the features, and hopefully you're able to see the uh, monitor. I'm going to try to adjust it right. There's a little bit of a glare on the back, but it sh we, we should be all right. All right, let's start with the Smart Box first. Like I said before, you have your two antennas. And then underneath, you have your two charging ports. And then on top, this button here is a night light. And it actually works pretty good. We tested it out last night. And uh, I tried getting a video, but the DJI doesn't like low light. And when you hit that, there is a little icon right here that is yellow. I wish they'd make it red or even black. Well, not black, but probably red. You, you can barely see it. But, uh, okay, right now the light should be out. Now, there is a sensor on the camera itself that won't let the light come on until it gets uh, dark out. This is also your pairing button. You push and hold it. This green light will start blinking. And you have, I think, 50 seconds or something to get to the camera and push the button underneath the camera to pair them. Now when we got this, it already came paired. Okay, this is your power button. Basically all this does is it puts it in standby mode and the light here will turn uh, red when it's in standby. And push it again and it's back on. Okay, this button here is your mirror button and uh, I'll show you what it does on the uh, monitor. Hey, basically, when you hit this, it flips your uh, screen around. Okay, then this last button, which is this one, is your NTSC slash PAL switch. And it's supposed to switch between um, American video format and everyone else everyone else is pal we are ntsc and i couldn't find anything on the display saying what i'm in so i emailed um halo view and they told me that if i'm getting bad reception on a monitor push and hold that and it, it'll switch to whichever one it's on it'll switch to the other one and you might have better uh, reception. Um, I'm really not sure about that. 
Okay, and here's your rear view. Um, on this side, you have your camera, which this will go in and out, and also your camera lens will pivot up and down and left to right. And then on the very bottom down here, you have a button, which is your on and off button, and it's also a standby button. So you can push that, like if you're not pulling, oh, it came back on. If you're not pulling a camper, you can go ahead and have your uh, dash cam on and still use your um, rear view mirror, which it doesn't work that bad. It's almost like having the uh, button down here at night to keep the headlights off you. So it's uh, it's really not, not that bad. You can see out of it pretty good. Um, nighttime's a little darker, but you can see headlights in that very well. All right, let's turn the, turn the screen back on. Okay, now you have your dash cam and your rear cam. Now you can tap either one to get them to come up. Uh, the dash cam has a lot of uh, reflection, the sun's out, so it's picking up the uh, dash pretty good. Your dash cam has a time and date stamp on here, plus it has a little red thing here uh, flashing, letting you know that you are recording. And then on the right side is the time, date, miles per hour, and direction of travel, which does work pretty good. And like I said, you can swap screens. Okay, it's really hard to see here because we're so close to this tree, but it might actually make it uh, easier to notice too. So, but you can also, okay, actually it's flipped. So let's flip it back. There we go. All right, so there's the ground. And then you can move your field of view, I guess you'd call it, up and down somewhat. And you can do that for the front also. So if you don't want to look at your hood so much, instead of moving the camera itself, you can just do that. Okay, next we'll bring up our menu. And all you do is you swipe up and your menu comes across the bottom. I, I think you can see that. Okay, your first symbol, let's get back up. First symbol is your record. Okay, now I hit it once, it stopped recording. We'll hit it again and it's recording. Your next button is for your files. Now you can go in, pick a file on the uh, dash cam, and use the uh, buttons to play and pause. Let's go back, and then you can pick the rear camera. Come on, there we go. And then this is for pictures. We'll get to that in a second. All right, let's bring the menu back up. Next one. Are your settings. Okay, first one is screen brightness. I've been adjusting that as I drive. And then your next one is the G sensor. Um, right now I have it on low. When we started out, we was on mid and it went off on me. And then I turned it to high. Well, high is high sensitivity. So it's going to go off if you slam your door. So I'm going to keep it on low. What that is, is if uh, you're in a collision or something, um, a hard jolt to the vehicle will put it into SOS mode and it will save that video. Uh, it happened to us on the way here. I'm going to link that video in right now. And you can see when I hit the bump on a bridge is when it started into the SOS feature. Okay, it's getting uh, hot in here. I started the truck up. Your BSD enable is your blind side detection. I have it set on uh, 30 miles an hour. You can go off 18 miles, 30 miles, or always on. The problem with always on is if you're going slow into traffic or something, it's going to keep going off and driving you crazy. Okay, MV sound reminder. So leave that on and then it will announce when a car is passing you. Uh, BSD mode, I have mine set at experienced driver. And then screensaver, you have some different options here. 
when you're towing with the camper I would leave that screensaver off and then that way it your camera will always be in your mirror when you're not traveling with the camper and you're just using your dash cam you can set that for one minute or two minutes what will happen is you'll be able to see the video in your uh, rear view for one minute and it'll shut off and then it'll act like a rear view mirror again or you can go two minutes or you just hit the button underneath and put it into standby mode now it's still going to record in standby mode okay now that does it for the uh, camera settings okay here you have your language and then your so sound I've had ours on mild and it's not that bad um, your HUD mode that is just what's um, being displayed on your monitor your mirror image I have it off uh, I don't want it flipped the opposite way so I want it looking the way I'm looking in the mirror okay next is your format to format an SD card which I did even though it came with one it's probably already formatted uh, next is factory settings and then next is date we had trouble keeping it in auto it keep wanting to go an hour behind so we manually set it I'll bring that up I don't know how well you can see that but it's self-explanatory let's cancel and then the last is for your time zone or auto so we picked the Eastern time zone and it didn't it kept going an hour behind so we went to manual set and then to get out you just hit the back arrow and you're back again and the next button is this uh, camera symbol you push that you just took a picture and it saves it into that one file I showed you next is microphone you can turn off the microphone there's no sound okay sound back on your next one is a lock symbol and what that does is if you're recording you can hit that it'll save that clip uh, I think it's 30 seconds of it and then your last one is to switch between the screens and that's it all right now what I like about it um, I like the fact that the uh, plug has the USB ports in it so you're not uh, losing any uh, USB ports by taking up the cigarette lighter um, Two, it gets the uh, monitor off your dash which is nice it's up out of the way and if you're towing a camper you're pretty much not using a rear view anyway um, I also like that it has a forward-facing camera uh, I also really like the blindside detection. I mean, we're driving and it dings. You're really not going to notice the red light coming on either side of the mirror, but that thing gets your attention. And uh, I think I said that when we was driving up here that you might be BS or just daydreaming. And it's a nice warning to let you know that a car is coming up on either side of you. Uh, it was a little difficult. Uh, calibrating it uh, manually trying to drive down a road was pretty hard but it did it did already come calibrated as far as I'm concerned okay the other thing I like which I'm going to try it out again tonight is that night light feature on on that camera uh, you can light up it's pretty bright you can light up the back of your ca camper pretty good if you got stuff stored out there um, yeah it's actually a very good feature I'll, I'm going to have to look and see if there are other models also have that feature on them, which I think is an excellent idea. Um, I actually think they should put that on the side cameras also. If you're out messing around or something, you broke down along the road, you can turn on one or the other cameras. Okay, now for my dislikes. Um, there, there's, there's not many. It's, it's a great system. My number one dislike is uh, I have their um, RD7, I think it is. And I have four cameras on it. I have one in front, one in back, and one on each side. And I miss having my cameras. I liked having the side view cameras. And um, I had the front one in case an accident happened. I can download that footage and uh, do something with it, whatever. But uh, I really miss having the, the four cameras. And another thing I miss that I can't do with this one easily, I should say, is I put a cigarette lighter inside the camper 
And what I do is when I'm camping, I take the monitor in, I plug it into the cigarette lighter, and I turn on all the cameras. Now it's recording the whole time. If anything was to happen around my camper, I have footage of it. I can go back into the files, pull up that footage, and see, see what happened. Okay, that's really the only thing I don't like about it. Uh, everything else, I mean, it's a great observation camera. Uh, you can't beat it. The um, price isn't that bad on it. It was easy to set up. It does what it's supposed to. And if you're not pulling a camper, you can turn the camera off and still use it as a rear view mirror. All right, so my battery died last night, so I figured I'd finish this uh, video in the morning. Um, all in all, I like the camera. It's a nice system. And uh, the only thing is, I do miss my side cameras when I'm driving. I use them a lot. Uh, I hope this video helps somebody out. And I have an affiliate link in my description that if you uh, purchase through that link, I'll get a small commission off of that, which would be great. Help pay for uh, batteries. Okay, so... Uh, once again, thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next time. Bye.